Crazy Train Guy presents an Okanagan Valley Railway production. Another episode of How Did He Do That? In this week's video, we're going to once again look at how to do lumber loads. In this case, they're the ones that have the uh, wraps on them. Um, and this is a relatively easy method to do this as well but i thought uh, actually this came from a uh, subscriber of mine who suggested that i i look at maybe doing this option by uh, getting pictures off the internet so i i found a workaround that's something similar to what he suggested um but uh i think this one worked out quite well and i will get to it right now okay i've got my table set up here and we're going to move forward but first i'd like to uh talk a little bit about my references of how i uh how I uh, found a solution for these lumber loads. For for the first thing I found is I did some searching on uh, on one of our favorite uh, things, YouTube, and there's a uh, fellow. His uh, YouTube channel is called Ron's Trains and Things. You may have heard of it. And in the August 29th, 2017 uh, video, which I will um, I will post a link in the comments below, he goes into detail how he made lumber loads. Now he used photographs off the internet and uh, he was also doing a center beam uh, car, which is a little different design. I'm just doing bulkhead flat, but he does go through in detail how to do it. So that's uh, one, one area you can check out. The other one is um, there's a uh, uh, online train magazine and all you gotta do is subscribe. It's free. It's called Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. And in that one, the July 2011 edition, uh, fellow did the same thing center beam flats again and but he also included a bunch of uh, photos of different lumber loads which i used and he includes that in the issue and they're all pre-sized for nho and i believe o scale so i just put them on uh got them on my computer downloaded the uh, images and uh, printed them off it was that simple so i will also post a link to that as well i highly recommend uh, uh getting that it's a good magazine so uh Let's uh, let's get going. Okay, so there's some different things you can use. Now, in the case of uh, the two uh, references I mentioned, Ron's Trains and Things and the Mall Road Hobbyist, they use different materials. Now, Ron used uh, balsa wood, which is uh, that's a good material. I don't happen to have any handy, so I have uh, I went with foam. Uh, the other fellow in the Mall Road Hobbyist, he used actually plywood, but just thin sheets because you're only doing each side of the uh, bulkhead flat. I'm sorry, not the bulkhead flat, the center beam flat car. So in my case, a block of wood really wasn't a practical idea. You're going to add significant weight to the car. So that's why I decided to go with the foam. But you could use balsa wood. Probably easier to work with. I had some challenges here. As you can see, the piece I've got here is a little bit butched. But uh, at the same time, it's uh, it will be adequate. Once it's covered, you won't see all the imperfections. So uh, here we go. So the first thing I've done here is I put the uh, foam down here and I traced out a pattern. I just, what I want to do is I want to cover the top in just white because the wrap, technically the labeling is on the sides. There is some uh, overlapping imperfection on it where you may see some wrapping over the top, but and that may happen here as we work away. So I'm just going to cut this out. It doesn't have to be perfect because like I said, what you're going to do is you're going to wrap over top with the labeled loads so this just needs to cover the foam on top so you don't see the pink coming through so it's going to sit right like that and then what i'm going to do here now is i've got my white glue I'm just going to put all this here let me move this over here so in the camera Okay, so basically, do here, I just want to get the glue on. It can get a little bit messy. So what you can do though is, uh, in between uh, 
and you're working on it, I suggest you wash your hand. Make sure your fingers don't get too sticky because you'll be working with the paper. You want the paper to get all marked up when you're working with. So, okay. And don't get too upset if it overlaps, but you can wrap it over top just like a, a Christmas gift. But there you go. So it's pretty much covered. Now what we're going to do, we'll start working on the sides. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do the, the first side. So what I did previously, it seems to work, is you want to line up as close as you can with the line. Like I said, it can overlap a bit. And then you, what you want to do is you want it to wrap around the bottom a little bit. And you want it to wrap around the side. So what I would do is I would bring it out a little bit on each side here. And we're going to cut it off right here. Okay. So I'm just going to just square that off with the ruler. Like I say, it doesn't have to be perfect. The part with this label, well, you want that to be pretty good, but everything that's wrapping around, it's not a big deal. But you're not going to see it. At the end of the car, it's, it's not going to be visible. I mean, you can, if you want, glue the, uh, the uh, on the ends, which I might still decide to do. But anyway, for now. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my X-Acto knife here. You want a nice clean cut. Cut along that line. Okay. Do the bottom one as well. Actually, square this off if we want just to even it out. Okay, you can see I missed the cut over here. Let's take the exacto knife run it across again. There we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold the bottom. Make sure you want a nice even. So what you gotta do is you gotta cut in the corner a little bit here. And you wanna cut in the corner a little bit here. Get our trusty glue again here. Sure that you get it right freaking on. Let's see how the ends can fold up. You have to re glue those a little bit. So 
we fold that in first, then put the wrapped end around second. There we go. Oh, that module gets not in here in that well. Okay. So now we'll do the other side. Just gonna mark off here. Somewhere around there. You can okay. So what I'll do is I'll square that off. This one I'm making a little bit longer as I think I made the little one maybe a little too short. Still worked, but okay. I'll cut this out. Yeah, it looks like it's going to fit pretty good. And this one, I'm going to cut the tops a little bit too. Okay. Looks like we need a little more glue in there. There we go. So that's uh, 
should be good to dry now. We're going to so let that sit and then we'll get back to this. Okay, so the glue has dried on the load from uh, the video yesterday. And I did add, uh, you can see I added paper onto the ends of the load. Let's plunk it in here and, uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Um, definitely looks better than the blocks of wood I was using previously. Now, mind you, um, you know, I, I did a fairly quick job on this for to, to get the video shot. But if, uh, you know, if you do more of a better job on squaring it off, you get even more authentic looking load or if you use different materials like either cardstock or as I mentioned earlier, maybe balsa wood. Uh, foam can be a little difficult to get it perfectly square sometimes unless you've got a really good heat cutter. So I hope you enjoyed this video and um, that, is, that concludes the how to make these lumber loads for bulkhead flat cars. Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you saw and wish to see more content on model trains and real trains, Please subscribe to my channel.